the thing about any place, and you see it in America like you see anywhere, is that there are parallel universes, you know? So that there are people who live in bubbles, who experience the so-called same reality in a completely different way than someone who, you know, lives in a government-issued bubble or, or lives, you know, in the hood or in the projects or da 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 how do we find like that equalizing force? Because I could look at where we are right now and say, okay, there are some positive things happening. It's great to see discussions surrounding like, uh, let's say gay rights or, you know, women's issues. You look at Planned Parenthood getting defunded, you know, right now. It's easy to see that there's, for every bit of progress you make, there's such humongous pushback from the people who want to kind of keep things either the way they were or restrict things to an even like tighter, more Christian fundamentalist, uh, you know, position than ever before. So it's hard to look and say, oh, things are getting better or things are getting worse because all of these things are happening at the same time, right? I mean, you look at what's coming out right now, for example, in relation to the war on drugs. The fact that everybody can kind of say right now, oh, yeah, the war on drugs failed. Actually, we approached it wrong. We have too many people in prisons. We need to decriminalize marijuana. That's positive, right? That's positive. The act of actually uh, changing those laws and, and, and reforming the criminal justice system is humongous. But the fact that we're talking about it is kind of humongous, too. Just like the fact that we are talking about, let's say, privilege, or white supremacy, or or fluctuations in pay scales between men and women. Like, there's great things that are on the table. My question is, how can we bring those issues to a point where we can actually take them for granted? Like, oh no, women get paid the same thing as men here. No, no, we would never, you know, criminalize someone like that. How do we get it to that point? How do we get past this point? Because. The thing that's hard about the stuff that's happening now, like marriage laws and all that, is that these are things that I believed and saw clearly when I was 10 years old. So at one hand, we could pat ourselves on the back and go, yay, progress. But on the other hand, you can go, fucking hell, that took a long time. It took a really long time, you know, for something that feels so obvious. There's no way around it, though, when you have these corporate giants and these Christian fundamentalists and I keep repeating that only because, to me, it seems clear at times that we do live in a kind of Puritan, hypocritical, Christian fundamentalist country. From the outside, it often looks like that. Like some of the wars we fight amongst each other are, are really on some narrow-minded way of looking at humanity. I also think that we could do more in like broadening uh, what we're talking about like, for example, when we talk about police brutality, you know, um, the fact of the matter is that if you're in Haiti or the Congo or Burkina Faso or, or Senegal, there's going to be tons of people whose mentality is primarily fuck the police. And the police may look just like them. So that it becomes a question of really how we approach authority or how power is manipulated by those who step into it without having to do much to earn it. It's a question of power, it's a question of authority, and, and us learning as citizens, knowing our power and authority as citizens, and the balance between the two. A lot of what we discuss in America as like domestic issues are global issues, and it would be great for us to feel more connected to the global questions surrounding those issues. Because I, I feel like in America often, you know, like, we're also very self-consumed. So I don't, it, it's true that we have a lot of issues. We have a lot of problems. We also impose a lot of problems just by the, you know, our daily comforts, you know, the things we take for granted, which are made elsewhere, which require this many people to make it, which require, you know, which require a whole different level of reality to exist that we don't think about so that we can have the comfort in our reality. It's a dangerous game we're playing, you know, but I think that technology is working more for us than against us. 
in leveling the playing field and for other people, for us to be able to see other people and other people to be able to see us and for us to be able to connect with something broader than our own given network. Overall, I would say that things are progressing, but it still makes me deeply angry to see and feel the pushback on a regular basis. It makes the fight that much harder. And I feel like the places where the fight is that much harder usually stems from a lack of education. So it brings us back to like, if we could get the educational rate to a certain level, the discrimination rate would shift. Because a lot of times you encounter people who are operating from, you know, old browsers that come from, you know, this idea of, you know, I don't really know those types of people. I have never really encountered them or my only image of them is what I see in music videos and TV shows and da da So there's no real experiential knowledge. Even, you know, in a general sense, only 14% only of Americans have passports, which means 86% of us you know, have no real clue of what the rest of the world is like. We may be surprised, you know, if we get sick in another country and get ushered to the hospital and look at the bill and go, oh, I thought it would be $8,000. It's only 30. Like, oh yeah, we don't play that game that you guys play in your country. I mean, that's prevalent outside of these borders. There's tons of things that are prevalent outside of these borders that we're in the same way that there are privileges that we take for granted. There are also ways in which we're really behind the times. And we take that for granted too, not realizing that alternative possibilities exist. So education, exposure, travel, all of these things are crucial, I think, in order to bring us to a point where we can upgrade society and, and have more progress with less pushback because there's so much energy wasted in fighting the pushback, you know? And if that energy had just been put in education in the first place, I think more people would get it. And we're talking about high school and grade school. This is a pivotal time. This is an impressionable time, especially a time where you should be using your creativity and figuring out how to use your creativity along with book smarts. The father comes up from the back like this and starts like charging Ray and start boxing him. Boom. <laughs> Oh shit, Razak's getting beat up by a kangaroo. Keep hip hop strong and, 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 and keep it going and put music, uh, good music back out there to the community. Like my, my career isn't comprised of Kanye West or Common only. Blue Collar, whatever we're talking about with J Records, Blue Collar was a classic album. 